G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. Today, our podcast, like much of our content, is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped are the world leaders in male grooming products and they've recently launched the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Hair Trimmer. As you can see, it's got a little light on it to illuminate your nuts as you're shaving them and it's got a 90 minute battery runtime, so you can watch- Is that some skin safe technology I see there? It is, it's ceramic bladed so that you don't cut your nuts as you're shaving and you can do it for up to 90 minutes, so that's like two and a half quarters of a final this final series. What else does Manscaped have in their performance package this season? Well, if you'd like to stay fresh, you can use their reviving crop mop ball wipes. Mm. If you'd like a clean start, you can use their crop cleanser ball cleaner and body wash. I could go for some of that right now. If you're into foot stuff, you can use their foot dusting foot deodorant to make that area smell a bit more pleasant if the smell isn't part of your kink. We're trying very hard to drown out the dog. And after you've done all that and you need a finishing touch, use their refined cologne by Manscaped. This Father's Day, if you're looking for a great gift from your dad, you can get 20% off that product and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using our exclusive code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. You get a great discount, free shipping, and you'd be supporting the channel. Bloody earth. Let's get into the video. All right, the next team we're going to discuss is the Adelaide Football Club. They finished 15th with a record of 7 wins and 15 losses and a percentage of 82%. Uh, for context, they were with a wooden spooner in the 2020 season. Did look like they were going to go winless throughout that whole year. Then pulled it together with, uh, I think it was the last three. Or Big back Three end, late yeah. wins anyway. I can't remember if it was three in a row, but... Um, something like that. So they came into this year with uh, pretty minimal expectations, you'd say. Had pick uh, pick two overall in Riley Tilthorpe, uh, but again, being a key position player, not he didn't someone... debut till a few rounds in. Yeah, it's show. not not as though they were going to sort of rely on him for improvement as such. Um, what did you make of Adelaide generally? They had that good start actually. Like they came out firing early in the year. They got a couple of wins, mm. or at least looked competitive in their first five six weeks. Hundred percent. They got some big performances. They were quite a good team to watch this year, actually, for a team that uh, only won seven games, particularly early. So I think from round one is when they shocked us. They beat Geelong yeah. in a high-scoring shootout, end-to-end football, really, really good game. Mm. Then I think they had that loss against Sydney where they did lose by about seven goals, but it was actually a good game. Yeah. Like, it was it was a strange... It was two exciting teams to watch in theory as well there they had one of the games of the year i reckon against gold coast which you adelaide versus gold yeah, coast on a it. saturday night or whatever it was um was actually really really enthralling they were three and one after four rounds um, uh, if i'm not mistaken so Something good luck. They, they beat yeah. the gold coast uh, geelong i can't remember who else that kind of escapes me but uh with their loss being against sydney they beat the demons and cats this year uh, um they were the first time to beat the demons weren't they they were yeah. they were uh, and they improved by four wins on their wooden spoon season. Do you have any other positives that come to mind, other than just the raw wins and stuff? Or I'd st- I'm struggling to think of specific youth that's really excelled from this year, but I'm assuming they've sort of had some good all around showings in that area. I can't really think of any particularly notable. Uh, Lockie Shoal. Oh, he had a pretty good year. He was really good. Uh, it, to be fair to you, it has been a while since the season ended, so it is hard to speak, think of specifics. But Sean Berg is another player that I think uh, looked really good. Tilthorpe as well, kicked five yeah. goals on debut. Remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> Didn't get the Rising Star nomination. Because Buddy Kozitski or whatever for yeah. Hawthorne and kicked more, and which, they won. Yeah, that which is fair. Yeah. I think I think they've both Kozitski kicked deserved five. it because I watched that game. Yeah, Kozitski had also played uh, a little bit more yeah. to that point, and it, it had exists exposed form McAdam um, another young player Jordan Butts as well I think yeah yeah, Butts actually yeah, he, yeah. he deserves a mention he had a very good year in defence you're all about the Butts uh, we'll put Taylor I think Taylor Walker is going to come as a positive and negative from this year I think in terms of form bit of a juxtapose yeah a little bit it was uh, it's it's almost yeah uh, anyway he, he he could have been all Australian on form at one point of the season like okay. throughout the season he was trending as though he was potentially going to win the Coleman. If not, yeah. he was going to come second um, and obviously fell away. But that top form was probably the difference in them winning and losing a lot of those games. Yeah. Like Taylor Walker, you take out of that. And he had the hot start to the year. Yeah, they're a lot closer to bottom two, I think, because he kicked like mm. five against Geelong. Um, six, even. Yeah, it might have been six against yeah. Geelong. And then, and then after that, he kicked like five against Sydney in the loss. And yeah. uh, he, he was... That was just about the best version of Taylor Walker I've ever seen. Uh, it was like the Matty Richardson on the wing type of thing almost. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, well, yeah, he was just mm. you know, insane. One of the best kicks from long range uh, on a set shot that the game's got at the moment, other than maybe Hawkins. Yeah, absolute cannon. We'll talk a little bit more about Taylor Walker in a moment, but uh, the percentage increased by 18%, showing a good improvement. 
generally their brand of football was strong. They recruited Jordan Dawson as well, and they held on to pick four. So yeah. they're going to get another good look at this year's draft and um, potentially hold another high pick in next year's they draft They made a well. big move trying to go up to one for Vaughan Francis, but couldn't get it done. Yeah, yeah. I was going to bring that up um, shortly. We'll, we'll just go into the negatives first. Uh, after the first month, they only won four of the next 18. Yeah. <laughs> so as so often... That was the counter to the year before. <laughs> yeah, so often as it so often happens with young sides, uh, they can't sustain their good form over the course of a season. I think Taylor Walker had a few injuries. Um, yeah, he'd fallen off before yeah. his controversies. Yeah, which, uh, which, which hurt in terms of the short yeah. term anyway. Uh, and they, they had some poor losses as well. Their GWS loss uh, in particular, they got annihilated at home. Uh, Essendon held them to their lowest ever score of 21, and the Bulldogs also walloped them as well. The biggest negative, I think, would be Taylor Walker in terms of um, all the off-field controversy that has been well documented. He's well and truly disgraced himself, and it's, it's a shame in the sense that it's a terrible end to what could have been a fantastic like fairy tale season yeah. for Taylor Walker when he was sort of written off, um, and it's all self-inflicted. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's, he's made a very stupid mistake, but uh, it's an interesting one because I don't know about you, but without getting it stuck into it too much, it's hard to imagine him running out in a football game again. I think they've said he's going to come back though. Yeah, it sounds like he'll come back, but yeah, he's they'll... probably going to get booed every time he gets the ball, don't you think? Probably, but. Mm. But you don't know if he's like the Adelaide fans will go. Yeah, you've made a mistake. You paid your penance or whatever, and let yeah. him off because he's a. Other teams will definitely boo him though. Mm. Opposition. Will well, that's him. true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I guess in history, like um, fans seem to be forgiving of their own players. Like every player's yeah. not every player. But lots, lots of players have made a mistake and then been welcomed back. Mm. Uh, it was, a, it was a horrible mistake, mm. but. Um, yeah. But hey, at least he didn't punch someone like Andrew Gaff. Yeah, well, that's it. Um, but I think in the social context, I think mm. it's it's harder for people to forgive Walker. Yeah. And as well, if you forgive Walker, then you kind of look like you're accepting racism mm. and stuff as well. So it's, it's an awkward one. I, yeah. I'm just more intrigued as to how that's going to play out because I did fully expect him to just get cut, to be honest. But um, Would have been the simple solution. Yeah, well, that's it. But uh, anyway, that, that one's a wait and see. Um, we won't bang on that too much about that. I actually do think it's a year where the positives did outweigh the negatives for the Crows. Yeah. How would you grade their season? Probably C plus, B minus. Like they've shown a bit of progress compared mm-hmm. to last year without the Spooners. Yep. You can't expect them to make up that climb at once, so they're doing their job climbing back up. Mm-hmm. I had originally written C. I think I'm going to bump that up to a C plus. They improved significantly on last year. Bearing in mind, they improved by four wins, but it was a COVID-shortened year. So they, they improved a bit. and But I think more so than that, the spirit that they're playing with, the brand of football is pretty strong. Yes, they were probably inflated a little bit by Taylor Walker playing so well. If he doesn't have that season, do they look half as good? Maybe not. But overall, they I think the culture is strong there mm. in terms of the playing culture. Yeah, I guess. Like, I mean, obviously, they've got off-field stuff over the last five years. And then Taylor yeah. Walker coming yeah. <laughs> doing that yeah. doesn't speak well for their culture. But I just mean in terms of players buying into a game plan and mm. playing with a good intensity. Yeah, Maddie Nix has come in and done that sort of stuff. Well, like their list management stuff, like I still question like Mark Rusciuto going on the media and t- some of the comments he's made about their recruiting and stuff and some of their players. Can you be more specific? Okay. This was a year, like it was someone who they traded and then he basically went out and bagged the shit out of them on the thing and he's. He said a few very questionable things where it's just like, is that right? why would you say that as like the CEO, list manager or whatever yeah, position he has? It. I think he's president. Yeah. Something it's, like he's that. He's very high up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, oh, yeah, it's hard to say without specifics. Do you, do you remember when Nathan Buckley came out and basically said he wasn't part of the Chris Main yeah, decision? Yeah. And do you remember there's like this urban legend that Collingwood got him mixed up with David Mundy? <laughs> 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 there's, an urban, that, there's a real, like a... <laughs> urban legend I have no idea if it's true but um, it would explain why you got such a big contract to be <laughs> honest. Um, anyway we'll go back to Adelaide they hold picks 4 33 75 and 80 and they brought in Jordan Dawson and it only really cost them a, a second rounder uh, because they, they did they moved their second rounder and a bit to get the future first which they then traded for Dawson so right. this year they hold pick 4 which is a big plus brought in Dawson out goes Jake Kelly a uh, bit of an upgrade, not the exact same sort of player, but Dawson's a good young player in the right age profile for them. And they got a free agent pick or whatever for Kelly, I'd assume, compo pick. 
I think that I think they did, and I think they moved it on. Yeah. I think that it was like in the thirties or some shit. From yeah, memory. probably later. Actually, I, I can't remember, yeah. but yeah. Um, let's talk about that move for pick one, uh, specifically Jason Horn Francis. What are your thoughts on Adelaide uh, offering pick four this year, a future first, and then a slight upgrade next year? So that kind of cancels itself out. Let's just say it was two top five picks, most likely. It is a big price to pay, but I can see and agree with why Adelaide tried to make that move. Like, he's a South Australian kid. Like, he's been prodigious at league level. Like, that prelim game everyone keeps referencing with the 25 and 3 mm. with lots of clearances. Yeah. Like, he's just shown that this someone that can impact your list. Because I was going to say, for downsides for Adelaide, I couldn't really see an A-grade midfielder in their current yeah. crop. That's a good call. Whereas Horn Francis would have been that A-grade midfielder mm. for them. Like, cause I don't see anyone currently on their list being like a Bont, Petraka, no, elite true. A-grade midfielder. No, they've got some good quality yeah. sort of utility players. like Complimentary Fog- guys. Fogarty uh, as a forward. Looks like he's yeah. probably going to be a dangerous forward. Um, Scholl's a very good back half player. Schoenberg is a generally yeah. good midfielder, but again, it's not the same thing as having your yeah. Petraka, Oliver, Bont types. I agree. And that's why they're probably going to look at someone like a Finn Callahan in this year's draft, an Erasmus maybe, someone who does project as a really high-level talent. And With the upside as well to be a top 10 AFL player. Like yeah, in the that's true. And yeah, that makes sense why you would look at it, a Horn Francis mm-hmm. as well. Um, yeah, it's, it, it is a lot to pay because, you know, think about it, two top five picks. What established player would fetch that? You're probably looking Walsh, at your... Petraka, yeah. Bond. Yeah, so they're rating him in theory as that level. No. Nah. And he hasn't played a game yet. So it's crazy. And but it's then crazy there's that the North additional incentive of him being South Australian, I think, that mm. gives them specifically that extra yeah. purchasing power, if you will. Yeah. The other flip side of that is if you've got a talent who's like from South Australia, do you kind of not just back yourself in to maybe try and get him home? <laughs> I guess that's, that's what they've done with Lukosius and Rankin. And yeah. The yeah. theory is they're going to be coming hard next season. Gross. What I've sort of heard. Yeah. I think, I think that's the case. They're both yeah. out of contract. But um, yeah, that, that, that's kind of an exciting sort of future for uh, Adelaide potentially here when they'd be looking seriously at those kinds of players um, Port Adelaide they've got to contend with as well but um, they're probably going to have the uh, the draft capital to make some of those deals and happen. the extra salary cap space I think to throw more money at yep. these guys coming back so they choose Adelaide over Port front, front end a deal etc yeah mm. I agree yeah so I agree in terms of the list management going after a, uh, a potential A grade midfielder um, I think they're yeah. probably still in the case of going best available and we probably are underrating some of their youth. I think, mm. like they, they've got a f- definitely some good players. But you're right; no one stands out as the next danger field like yeah. they that when they drafted him. So, um, or Sloan even. So, yeah. Anyway, that will probably do for Adelaide.